So let me just set the scene here. You buy a new locomotive, bring it back to your layout. It's a big locomotive, so you're expecting it to haul a bunch of cars, and then it just doesn't. If you haven't experienced this, you are a liar. So what do you do? Return it, cope with it, and haul short trains? Or do you spend the time and money to amp up your power? Well, if you're in that last group, let's find out what makes a locomotive pull and how you can upgrade your locomotive to pull long and heavy trains. There's two main factors in getting your locomotive to pull, torque and traction. We'll start with torque. In model train terms, torque is the power the locomotive makes at the driven axle. In this case, the power is created at this third axle with the crank right here. Two things will impact the torque your locomotive will create, the motor itself and the gear ratio from the motor to the wheels. A lower gear ratio will increase the locomotive's top speed, but at the expense of torque. Higher ratios increase torque at the expense of top speed. The optimal ratio will vary from locomotive to locomotive as diesel and electric locomotives have significantly smaller wheels and thus have smaller gear ratios than steam locomotives. If there's a torque issue, it's worth looking into the gear ratio to see if it needs to be changed. The motor itself will also impact torque as generally more poles will run slower and have higher torque. Motors with more winding on them have also been proven to have more torque. So here's the locomotive I chose to use as an example in this video. This is a Bachmann 284 Berkshire, a locomotive with notoriously poor pulling power. How do you tell if a locomotive needs more torque? Well, if you're ready to modify a locomotive, chances are you've tried to pull a train and gotten stuck before. If there isn't enough torque, the locomotive will grind to a halt entirely. If the locomotive has too much torque for the amount of traction, the locomotive will spin its wheels furiously. The locomotive here is clearly not suffering from a torque issue. That leads to our other main factor, traction. Traction can be defined as how much of that torque the wheels get to the rail. One of the things that makes real world trains so efficient as a form of transportation is their traction, or rather their lack of it. Once a train is moving, it takes very little force to keep it moving thanks to the steel wheels on the steel rails providing very little friction. The problem is that immense force required to get that train moving. Real world locomotives get their power from their immense weight and their number of driven axles. The amount of driven axles generally affects pulling power as a locomotive with six drivers will logically pull less than one with eight. However, this is not always the case, and also to debunk a common myth, almost every locomotive in HO scale made in the past 60 or so years has had nickel-plated metal drivers. So the traction coefficient on just about any locomotive made in the past 50-60 years is going to be either identical or very similar. Now, I'm sure everyone who has struggled with a locomotive slipping has put their hand on it to give it that extra bit of oomph. This adds more weight to the drive wheels and increases traction on the rail. So, how do we add more weight to the locomotive? Adding weight to a locomotive can be incredibly easy or incredibly difficult depending on what locomotive you have. So, let's look back at the Berkshire here. It's a large locomotive with plenty of space to pack in weight. There's plenty of methods for adding weight to trains. Liquid gravity is a very popular one I keep hearing, essentially a bunch of tiny little BBs that you set with glue. I've also seen regular sized BBs used, cut up old train car weights, screws, pretty much anything with decent weight density. So for the Berkshire, I elected to use lead tape originally. You can find this in sports stores and it's used to add weight to golf clubs or tennis rackets. Obviously, be careful handling this stuff. Lead is dangerous if inhaled or swallowed, so wash your hands after handling it and be careful when cutting it. I essentially built up a block of lead tape over the front two drive axles and it packed a bit more in the rear just for good measure. Did it work? Yes, absolutely. But I also think it would be vastly cheaper and easier to use something else. You also can't just pack a bunch of weight into the model. It's important to know where to weight the model. It has to be concentrated over the driving wheels. I made the mistake of putting too much around the firebox area, which upset the balance on the drivers, resulting in the trailing truck supporting the weight rather than the drivers, and the driver slipping once again. You can correct this by either removing some weight from the heavier side, or by balancing it out on the opposing side, which is what I did with some tungsten putty which I crammed into the smoke box. That balanced the weight over the drivers, resulting in much better weight distribution and thus more traction. Now that I've packed more weight into a Berkshire than any reasonable human being should, it's still slipping a bit, and knowing what Berkshires do, I want to haul 18 coaches and a water tender with it at 70 scale miles per hour. I can't fit any more weight into this thing without upsetting the balance on the drivers, so it's time to resort to what some may refer to as cheating. Probably the most common way to improve traction is by adding traction tires. 
Let's think of this in car terms. A car can out-accelerate a locomotive as the rubber on tires provides for more effective acceleration and changes in momentum, but reduces efficiency at speed. Of course, we're not hauling real freight, so the added efficiency of steel wheels on steel rails does not really apply here. Many toy trains use some sort of tire to make up for their lack of weight in most cases. Some really hate traction tires, and I guess it can be annoying to change them out when they become rock hard and useless, but on the other hand... Power! Lots of high-end steam locomotives tend to come with tires these days, such as this Broadway Limited 282. Steam locomotives cannot always be packed with weight like a diesel locomotive since the complex shape of a steam locomotive can be hard to pack with weight, or the motor can take up all the space inside of the boiler of the model, such as with this newer tool, Bachmann Old Time 440. Several companies offer universal traction tires for locomotives. However, some tires may be designed to fit into grooves and wheels and may result in an uneven ride if not put into those grooves. So do your research. There are some very low profile tires out there that won't hamper your performance. The other way to get some extra grip on your wheels is Bullfrog Snot, essentially a liquid traction tire. It's a simple installation, takes a couple minutes and about a day to fully cure before becoming usable. Now, I will say it is not as good as a regular traction tire, but there's worlds of improvement on the Berkshire here. The locomotive no longer slips with an even longer train in the same area. It's a great product, although it should be noted it will impact electrical connectivity. So use it with caution and only on locomotives with lots of pickups. I say locomotives with no fewer than eight pickups. Also, like any tire, it will have to be replaced. There's no issue here, as I found that a hobby knife will be able to take it off with ease. And hopefully that gave you a bit of a basic understanding as to how to improve your locomotive power or maybe why that locomotive pulls so poorly. This Berkshire initially struggled pulling just six cars, but now can pull over twice that with relative ease. This is by no means a comprehensive guide or how-to video, but hopefully it got you thinking and looking into how a model pulls and maybe why a locomotive pulls so well or so poorly and how to rectify that. But that's all for me. Until next time, stay on rolling.